Oh boy, here we are on Twitter again. What a surprise. I think I'm going to be making a lot more of these style videos. I like making these because tech Twitter is full of content and stupidity, like you can read here. Uh, your reminder to not flash anything you don't trust on XDA. Thank you, Captain Obvious. Ooh, here's the punch in the gut that's really stupid. Uh, Google is sending people to make virus ROMs that break your device, so be warned. No, they're not. Neither is Samsung. Neither is Motorola. Neither is Mui. Neither is Huawei. Nobody is sending, is hiring somebody to make a garbage ROM and brick phones. Oh my god. Okay, so... Luckily, I'm good at Google, and I went and I found the thread, and I found the guy that it's about. So, Syntaxer. Well, joined XDA on Friday at 10.27 a.m., uh, last seen today at 9.24 a.m. Uh, looks like had a couple threads. Was putting Android 14 on the S9 and S9 Plus Xenios. First of all, I don't think that chip is even capable of running a 64-bit only OS, but, you know, whatever. That's beside the point. Um, we're not going to talk about tech specs here. We're going to talk about some other stuff. So, <coughs> thread closed at request of OP. Hmm. Uh, yeah, okay. Anyway, let's let's uh, let's figure out what's going on. So I want to read the stupidity to you because the stupidity is fun. I've made videos like this in the past where I went over, oh, somebody hacked me and this is what happened. Um, and then just made fun of them for the entire video. And it was a lot of fun. A lot of people liked that video. So <clears throat> Juju da Bomb 1998. First of all, you are too young to understand what is even going on on your phone. I don't care that people understand tech better these days. 1998, I'm going to assume you were born in 1998. No, nah, you young and stupid still. So you, no, I'm not taking anything you say seriously. Don't flash this garbage. Good advice. Do not often run unofficial ROMs and expect them to be good daily driver ROMs on your Android devices. Unless somebody has a long history on XDA compiling ROMs from source from AOSP and then posting them to XDA generally don't try to daily drive an unofficial lineage or something like that anyway let's get reading this is going to be this is going to be fun I'm going to take a sip of water I recommend you do too is that meme dead the whole like hey are you drinking water because you should be that whole thing anyway I was adding a second email account, and then for some odd reason, my lock screen stopped working. Ooh. I went to settings to try to resolve it, but then a notification came at the top saying, your phone is rip in 10 seconds while making the loudest ringtone, and it restarted, and now my S9 says S9+, Plus, which it never did before, and I can't enter download mode or recovery mode or boot back to the ROM. Mm, I so let's let's dissect this because there's a lot of stupidity here. So this is an unofficial ROM. There, it's entirely possible it was a bad compile or like following a shitty tutorial or something like that to try to make this ROM, and that's why, you know, maybe the phone won't go into download mode stuff like that. I have bricked Samsungs in the past as well. You have to use. Uh, like EDL mode or something like that sometimes to patch them at that point. But your phone is... I paused my video so the garbage motorcycle owners that were riding past my house with their obnoxious exhaust wouldn't overpower me sitting in front of my microphone because my door is open. Anyway, your phone is ripped in 10 seconds. Okay, so what happened there? Well... That probably didn't happen at all. There's no visual proof of this. None whatsoever. No visual proof of this guy's claim of, 
oh, your phone is rip in 10 seconds and making the loudest ringtone I've ever heard. Then it restarted and had the S9 Plus splash screen. There's no proof of this anywhere. He does not post visual proof. Take this with a grain of salt. Actually, don't believe it at all. Don't believe it at all. Complete idiot. Just trying to get, like, yeah, it's probably a bad ROM. Do not use these style ROMs, but, like, even still, uh, I can totally believe if the device restarted and now it says S9 Plus and he's using, you know, an S9 and maybe the person who made the ROM, this guy, accidentally compiled the S9 Plus version and used the, you can, so those logo.bins or logo.imgs, those are interchangeable. I can take a logo.img from one Samsung and try to flash it to another one if I really want to. I can try to do that and make the lo- uh, the logo splash screen the incorrect one. It's not that hard. It's very easy to even mix and match if you are modifying ROMs at that level. Uh, if you are compiling from AOSP, I don't have the original threads for these they're not on archive or anything like that unfortunately all of that is entirely possible that it does say you know incorrect it has the incorrect splash or something like that because it's just a logo.img that img can be opened up with common tools and you can modify the img image to basically be whatever you want it to be so if let's say i made a rom for my oneplus If I wanted the EOS branding, even on the initial launch screen of me first holding the power button, I can comp, I can custom make that logo dot IMG and then flash it and in fast boot and that's it. Um, so, you know, let's continue. I don't know if this is malicious or truly the worst ROM ever made. I don't know what triggered it, but I can only assume it is something to do with the ROM. So also big assumption there uh could have installed some rogue app we don't know is the guy rooted if the guy has a rooted device and installed some like side loaded some you know virus filled app which is very difficult to do there is so much here that's missing that it's complete idiocy trying to believe this guy's claim um i highly doubt this entire post i also don't know how to save my device it ran out of battery but it begins as soon as i connect it again even after charging it for a bit my phone seems toast it probably is toast but it is it might be savable so either there's the difficult way of pulling the back off find the ground points and getting into edl uh through the board and then you can flash it with a USB with EDL flasher or star LTE. I actually have one on the floor behind me. That's brand new, never been used. Um, the other thing that's entirely possible, and I've done this before. It's actually potentially very easy to save this phone. So let it die. Just turn it on. Let the battery completely freaking cook. Just completely cook. It's a big timing thing at this point. Um, I had a Samsung once where I actually it was the S9 that's behind me on the floor. Uh, I make it sound like I'm such a messy person. I kind of am, but I'm also not. I am chaotically organized. But what ended up happening actually, ironically, with my Star LTE is I accidentally installed a Xenios ROM to a Snapdragon. And what ended up happening was the phone wouldn't boot. I couldn't get to download. I couldn't do anything. I had to literally lit. I had to let it sit on the splash screen. Oh boy, a Harley. I was watching my audio levels as the Harley went by. And it was peaking higher than me talking. Even at like my loudest speaking volume. The Harley was peaking my microphone louder from the street. Anyway. With my device, I accidentally flashed a Xenios ROM to a Snapdragon. Um, It was my own fault. I was messing around with stuff. Don't worry about it. Uh, 
this was not any like developer thing. I just didn't realize kind of what device I had. So I flashed the wrong ROM to it. I had to let the battery completely cook, just die. And then as soon as you get one shot, when it turns on, when you plug it in, you have to plug it into the USB port on the computer you want to flash it with Odin with. Turn it on. As soon as that screen, or as soon as you plug it in, you need to hit those volume buttons to get to Odin. That's the only way to save that device. And I'm probably going to message this guy and let him know uh, because it's the right thing to do. Okay, this guy's only ever posted once. Um, I don't believe that even if I do message him, that it's going to go through. But I'm still going to start a conversation to hopefully try to save his device. But in the end, I still think this guy is lying about everything that happened to his phone. I doubt that there was some pop-up, and if there was, maybe he was rooted and it screwed it up that way. But I'm going to type something up, and then I'll go over it with you guys. All right, so this is what I said to him. I saw your post via a Twitter post about the whole rip 10 seconds and the device rebooting, showing the S9 logo instead of the S9. I wanted to reach out about potentially a way to fix it. I once flashed the incorrect ROM, the MyStar LTE, and had a similar issue device just sat on splash wouldn't go to recovery wouldn't go to odin or download just just had to let it sit i've been a microelectronics technician for 15 plus years i've also been an android rom flashing enthusiast pretty much since gingerbread i figured it doesn't hurt to message and tell you how i fixed mine you have to let the battery die entirely to the point the lcd maybe just flashes if you try to turn it on from there, plug the USB-A into a USB 3.0 port on the computer before the other end into the phone. USB 3.0 can carry enough power over USB to keep the device powered on while connected to the computer. Hold the proper buttons for download mode, then plug in the USB-C end of the cable into the phone. If you get lucky, it'll go to download. If you don't, you can try holding volume down in power and rebooting, and then Odin buttons again to try to get to download. It's a timing thing. It's weird. You have a very small window of time to get to download mode. You can try recovery mode and then down reboot download from the recovery menu with this method as well, but it's unlikely with how it sounds the ROM was compiled. What I believe happened was the Syntaxer dude probably followed some shit tutorial on YouTube, used the wrong logo.min or even the wrong device tree name somewhere during the compiling process in the ROM building process and had the device brick that way. Or it's an old school APK swapping style ROM, which just doesn't work very well these days. If I can try to help resurrect your device, I'm down. So I, I think that's okay. You know, you know, at least I'm reaching out, trying to be helpful, but I really don't believe this guy's story with all this stuff going on. But anyway, this guy did have multiple ROMs as well. So there was one for the S9 and S9 Plus. There was one for the Note 9, I believe I saw, which was this one, this thread. Galaxy Note 9 uh, is posted and closed. Yeah. So, you know, oh, I mean, the word of advice I've always given is don't expect... Uh, ROMs to work this way. I think it's an APK swapping ROM, not a true Android 14. Somebody just, you know, some stupid kid looking for clout. Oh, I submitted a ROM to XDA. Kind of like me back with the S5, but at least I actually made ROMs that worked. Uh, I don't know. Take it with a grain of salt. You can change all this stuff in the build.prop and then just put it back and then make it look like Android 14. Android 14 wasn't different enough from Android 13 to truly really mean much. It just removed 32-bit apps and all that, so I don't know. Uh, we'll see what XDA says. I, I really doubt this guy's claims about the viruses and stuff like that. But at the same time, it's, I don't know. I don't know. I have no idea. Anyway, I'll talk to you guys later. I just 
wanted to bring awareness to this. Don't believe everything you see on the internet and don't for a second believe that Google is going to hire people to ruin Android ROMs. That's never going to happen. Oh my God, that's the stupidest thing I've read all day.